many of my videos look like this. I'm here, you're over there, and there's a camera and a monitor between us that you don't see. That's what brings me into your home or your mobile device. Sometimes I show you what it looks like on my side of things, and that's actually our focus today. Not just on the camera that I'm using, but how I make sure that I'm in focus and that I'm right here and not like over there or over there. <laughs> Monitors. I use a couple of different options. In recent months, I've been using an Atomos Ninja 5 as a monitor and even to record many of my videos. With this setup, I think of the monitor as something to use for composition and exposure, but I also think about color grading and my other edits later on. Feel World contacted me. They make monitors that can help photographers and videographers alike. They have a great reputation and I have reviewed one of their products before, but to be honest, I wasn't super excited about reviewing a monitor. I love what I do, but some of the gadgets that help me make videos are just things that I use, a means to an end, so to speak. But then Field World mentioned that they have some interesting new monitors available, including some options that allow you to load LUTs right onto the monitor itself. We will go into more detail in a moment, but basically it means you're going to be monitoring color accurately in the field while your photos and videos are being captured. As someone who often feels like it's me against color balance and accuracy when it comes to filming myself for videos, I will take all of the weapons that I can get my hands on. <laughs> this monitor does have more tricks up its sleeve than just the LUTs, and I will show you how it all works together in this video. Before we get to those 3D LUTs that this monitor supports, what about the monitor itself? For one, it produces accurate color aside from the LUT capability, and that is key. Also, the LUT 7S model is rated at 2200 nits of brightness and is marketed as a daylight viewable field monitor. And they don't mean daylight viewable if you like stand right next to it and peek into it like this. <laughs> We took this monitor outside at noon in the summer in the Arizona desert, and it worked like a champ. Now onto those 3D LUTs. I am certainly not a professional color grader, but I do shoot and I share quite a lot of video. So here goes. 3D LUTs read the color information from one source, like your camera, and translate the values into slightly different color tones. These are used in movies and other cinematic recordings to introduce a particular look or style to the video. Developing LUTs is truly an art form, and the good news is that you don't need to develop your own unless you're actually interested in doing that. There are industry standard LUTs and custom LUTs that you can purchase online to capture that unique look and feel that you're after. My Nikon Z7 that I use for most of my filming can shoot 10-bit video in N-Log, as can the Z6 and the Nikon D780. Here's what Nikon has to say about it. Shooting in 10-bit N-Log format preserves details in highlights and shadows and expands the range of effects available through color grading. Record video capturing up to 12 stops of dynamic range of the camera's image sensor retaining detail in the highlights and shadows. This is true of some other brands of cameras that shoot video also. There's just one problem. Formats like N-Log are conservative. It's like a photo that you shot in RAW with very conservative color and contrast settings, and then you intend to edit it later. The concept here is the same. The question becomes how to get the look and feel that the video will have after editing while you're still capturing it. This can and will help you make decisions about lighting and color in the field instead of potentially having a mess on your hands later on. Now let's back up. We'll go over some of the basics of the monitor and in that I will show you how you can set up some of the preloaded LUTs and even load some of your own 3D LUTs onto the monitor itself. One thing that I noticed about the many features of this monitor is that they are designed for accurate and efficient workflow in the field. There are no frivolous features or funny tones or other stuff that's more fluff than function. This is definitely a tool, not a toy. The screen itself is a 1080p IPS panel. I do want to note that the monitor accepts 4K input, so no problem if you're shooting 4K as I am. 
It has a 160 degree viewing angle. So as you're moving yourself or others around the set, you're not constantly readjusting the monitor. You have a histogram view, even focus assist. Now these are things that I use on my camera, but obviously they are much larger on this screen in a tool that is designed to analyze your footage in real time. It has audio monitoring as well. Monochrome, zoom, anamorphic mode. Again, more functions to help filmmakers, even aspiring ones, all to assist you in visualizing your final product in the field. There are various other options and adjustments also. Raymond will discuss those in a moment, but let's look at the hardware first. Dual F970 battery slots. This means you can do the two battery shuffle to keep the monitor going and going without interruption. I wish my Atomos had that. Without it, to change batteries, you'd have to power down and then power back up at each battery change. You have HDMI in and out, so you can chain to other devices and recorders that accept an HDMI signal. Even additional monitors if you're shooting with a larger crew or you want to output to an external recorder. There is power output and optional camera battery adapters available. Why? As you're powering the monitor with the high capacity Sony F970 batteries, you can be powering the camera at the same time. The goal here just is just to keep you going. It may be more simple for you to use one type of battery and one source for replacing them during shooting. For those working with broadcast video, there is an option on some of Feel World's models for SDI in and out. I told them that I didn't need that, but know that it is available. And there is an SD card slot, both to load 3D LUTs and for firmware upgrades. Okay, I'm going to throw it over to Raymond right now to talk more about the features and how to get your LUT loaded onto the monitor. I'm going to take you through some of the technicals of this monitor, just to show you the flexibility and some of the different options that it does have. Not a complete walkthrough, but I think the ones that are most useful are the ones that I'll show. For one, just in the studio here, we had to lower the brightness of the monitor to 25, just so it would be somewhat balanced with the environment. When we used it outside, we used it at like 75 because it was actually at 100, it was just brighter than, than the environment and it balanced better at a lower setting. In short, this monitor is really bright. I know Lee emphasized it, I'm emphasizing it again because it deserves it. <laughs> now let's get into some of the technicals here. So I've got it hooked up to our Z7 here, right in the studio. I've got the HDMI in the bottom, in the in, and there's three function buttons across the top here. There's a menu button and there's a power button, but it's also a touch screen. For one, there's a quick menu swiping up from the bottom of the screen with some key things you might wanna change. I'll go over some of those same options when we look at the menus. And now there's a button and a wheel up top, but once you start using the touch screen, it's hard to stop. So you just double, double click to get this menu up on the upper left-hand side. Let's go to the first item. Focus Assist, it works very similar as a mirrorless camera where you can set um, the color that you want, uh, how picky you want to be about the focus. Um, you can do zebra stripes as well for exposure and hot spots, and you can set the zebra value. So you can set it at 80% if you want to stay safe on your highlights, or if you want to be a little more aggressive, you go to 95 or 99%. Down here to false color. In short, this gives you different colors for different luminance values in your image. On either type one or type two here, skin tone, uh, you want it to be gray and then there's blues and purples to the to the lower values and then as you get higher it gets to red there's tables online that you can look up and see what these discrete uh, color values mean in terms of your brightness and intensity uh, just google false color and you'll get all the information that you need there but we never used that before and we're actually starting to on to the next option menu here uh, you have a grid of nines that you can put up Safety markers for different formats, 16 by nine, depending on how you're shooting and depending on what your final product is. Uh, you can do a center marker, which is a cross down the middle. You can do a mat for your different uh, aspect ratios. And you can change the color of that mat and marker as well. Um, over here, video aspect ratio. Oh, if you're shooting with an anamorphic lens, you can turn that on and it'll show you the correct post-production representation of your image. 
uh, flip horizontal, vertical. Uh, you can zoom by a multiplier so that you don't have to monitor the whole view. You could actually zoom in and monitor a particular portion of your, of your framing. You can freeze the image that you have on the screen and you can go 100% pixel to pixel. Let's see, where were we? Oh, you can put on waves and histograms. This is, I'd never done anything like this before. We got the, let's turn the histogram on too. So now as I move the image around, down on the bottom, it's showing me my red, green, and blue and where they are and how intense they are in the image. It has this color map in the upper left-hand corner. I've never seen or used that before, but I see what it's doing. It's showing me what, uh, how, how deep I go into the different colors there. And then there's your more traditional uh, histograms on the left. And I have the audio monitoring on there as well. And then go to, go into the next menu down. This is where we can do our LUT import. Now I'll put the screen up for Nikon's 10-bit uh, Z6, Z7, D780 LUT on the screen. But I want to be clear, any 3D LUT is fair game here. That just the one that we happen to load onto this monitor. So what you do is you put that on an SD card and you do an import. First it says initializing and then it says success. Then you can turn the LUT switch on. Let's pick the LUT. There's the standard LUTs that come on the monitor and then there's the LUT that I downloaded as one of the options now. If you have more than one LUT on the card, I have one, you'll see more additional options down there. Color temperature, uh, backlight, brightness, contrast, saturation, all the things that control the way that the monitor will appear to you. You can control some additional functions as well just by swiping the screen. I did mention the function buttons. And those are configured here as well. As you can see, I'm just feeling my way around the monitor and some of the more in-depth settings. What's been most important to us so far is having the histograms and the highlights has been really good out in the field because depending on your lighting situation around you, uh, you can't trust the monitor. You want to trust and verify with those discrete values, even with the false color, to make sure that you're getting the right luminance and brightness that you expect in your exposure and you're not tricking yourself just based on how bright you have the monitor out in the field. So we like those discrete things that you get to see that help you get your intensity and your saturation correct out in the field. The fact that we can actually see it outside in Arizona on a sunny day is a clear departure from what you normally see on the LCD screen of your camera. Some of the images and video we put up earlier, you can see the difference and it's an absolutely incredible difference in the field, even really more so that comes through on video. So I'm going to turn it back over to Lee now for our final wrap up. In short, there is a lot more to video monitoring than I would have imagined when I first started this channel. Really though, you can use this monitor a few different ways. Let's go over one basic situation, getting live view from your DSLR or mirrorless camera to be bigger. So often with live view, especially when focusing manually, like for astrophotography, Raymond and I with our aging vision <laughs> her peering down at the camera's LCD screen to get the best focus possible. This takes that same output and makes it seven inches across. We'll take it. <laughs> so for one, it makes the camera easier to use, especially when buried in live view, getting those settings picture perfect. Then for video, when we know we're going to be doing plenty of post-production work, we have a leg up in the field with a monitor that we can actually see outdoors even in super bright conditions. And we can match the color in the field to our expected output when editing, even when shooting N-Log or other conservative video settings that absolutely require post-processing. So even if you're not shooting the next Academy Award winning film and you just need a good idea of what you're capturing in the field, you're covered. I'm putting some links in the description of this video so that you can get information on the latest pricing and availability of this monitor and some of its siblings. Feel World does have a few different options at different price points, and we are Amazon affiliates. So when you use those links below to get to Amazon and then you purchase the monitors or almost anything, 
it helps our channel in a small way so that we can keep things up and running here. So thank you to those of you that use those links. But did we leave you with any questions about this monitor? If you have any questions, ask them down in the comments and give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We share multiple videos every week on all things photography. And thank you for watching.